what's happening in Danbury, local and national politics. What should I watch on Netflix? Here's Danbury Mayor Mark Bowden with your answers with Ethan and Lou on I-95. And here he is, Mayor hey, Mark. 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 Hey. What's up, boys? How we doing? Good, Good man. How, How are you? you? I'm great. All right. You're... America. Hashtag America. America. <laughs> so I, I hate to start with a, with, with, a, with a downer, but it's top of mind for the, the entire country right now. The uh, tragedy in Florida, I don't know if you were listening to the show, but we struggle with these things and we do our best to communicate to our listeners that we feel like you do. We're human beings and we, we, we have feelings about this thing. Um, I have to, t- to tell you what a great job I know personally the Danbury schools do with this stuff. In fact, just this morning, my wife forwarded me the message that went out from my son's school, a very comprehensive list of situations where the kids might ask questions and how the teachers should answer. I was very impressed with their work. Well, that's great to hear. And, you know, we this morning I also ordered a uh, larger police presence uh, for a few days uh, around our, our school buildings to let parents and students and staff know that we, you know, we are watching and we are concerned. But, you know, we're really blessed with great officers that, um, you know, and we're small enough where we can track uh, certain individuals and we, and we sort of know where people are and um, we watch our buildings very closely. We have great safety advocates that are in the buildings and most of them are ex-police um, uh, or perhaps retired fire or some kind of public safety background and all have been trained and work closely with the principal and their sole function uh, in each building is to maintain safety and security. That's all they think about. So the principal is there to guide the curriculum and, and work closely with the safety advocate, but that person uh, has a responsibility for keeping the place secure. Now, being that you're running for governor, and I mean, we, we say all morning uh, when things like this come up, we're, we're, we're going to not politicize this. That's not fair to anybody feeling these terrible feelings and, uh, and looking at these tragedies. You are a politician, though, and you're running for state office. Sure. What is the solution? Well, if there was a solution, an easy solution, we would all do it, right? I right. mean, um, but the fact of the matter is that these are very complicated situations um, where are resulting in you know, mental health issues, the breakdown of the family. Um, all of these things come together uh, to form a, a horrible situation. Um, and certainly, you know, there are certain things that um, uh, on, on controlling of, of uh, different kinds of devices are always something that, that's up for discussion and, and access to uh, background checks, things like that. All these things are, are important, but it really is a mixture of, of what happens with some of these kids, uh, and particularly their um, numbness to violence as well and the glorification of violence on TV and the movies and video games. All of that comes together, and most kids can handle it. Ninety percent of the kids out there can handle it. It's the 10 percent um, that we see out there that can't, and, and how we address that and uh, what kind of systems we put in place to be able to identify those kids and, and get them back on the right path is really going to be a test for, for our country and our state. Um, so uh, if there were an easy answer, it, it already would have been done. You know, we, particularly here in uh, Western Connecticut, are acutely aware of this with, with, with the horror of Sandy Hook. And, you know, that's still a, an ongoing discussion and debate here, both in Connecticut and across the nation, about you know, what can we do to, to try to limit these kinds of events or, or stop them. You made a great point about the video games. It's something I bring up all the time in the desensitivity to violence that they experienced that we didn't have. It's odd to me the outrage that people will have over, and we get to see quick examples of it here on the show. We will talk about a sex act and maybe get a little graphic or, you know, we're, and people will freak out. And that very same person will let their kid play a first person shooter game for four hours in the same day. Yeah, I, I think the point-and-shoot games are problematic. And just remember, when you know Ethan, Lou, myself, when we were growing up, obviously different generations because I'm so much younger than you guys, but when we were growing <laughs> up, um, you know, if you, if you got in a schoolyard fight, um, you know, it, even if you were the winner of the fight, it still hurt. You know? so right, right. You kind, of, you kind of figure, you know, I don't want to be in another one of these again. You know, I don't, I'm, this isn't something I'm really interested in unless, obviously, you, you know, you have to. But... It's different now um, because you can point and shoot something and, you know, you walk away and, and you're unscathed and, and you don't have the empathy and the sympathy for the other person that's obviously uh, been killed or maimed. So all that stuff, uh, you know, just kind of falls into this area of, of 
kids not getting the right messages from us as adults and uh, our society. And we've got to work on it. I, I don't know what the best answer is. Uh, people freak out when you talk about limiting or uh, video game access and things like that. Um, but uh, the path we're going on right now is not a good path. Well, you can't, shootings. I, I hear you. Um, you can't. You're not, no sure. one's sitting here blaming the video games. It's not the video game's fault. Right. It's not items' fault. But uh, also, I'm going to say something, uh, and we're trying to stay away from this. I said to Ethan off the air, nothing changes if the two sides, and we know what they are and what they believe, don't compromise. People have to give up on both sides for this to stop. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. Look, I, I, I support and, and believe in the Second Amendment and, and agree with the Second Amendment reading um, that, you know, people have the right to own a firearm. I have no problem with that. Um, but, you know, does that mean we shouldn't have background checks for um, everybody out there, uh, particularly those that are mentally ill? You know, should we have conversations about uh, the 4 or 2 or 3% of people that maybe shouldn't be eligible to own a firearm because of something in their past that, you know, would preclude them from that. And the, it, there's a, there is a medium in there, you know, and, and obviously um, we have to have better conversations about those things and, and certainly be willing to compromise, but never compromise on the principle of being able to own a firearm. Now, as a person t- on a day like today, it just happened. Not as a politician. When you see on social media people firing off the filtered statistics on either side of the aisle about how they feel on guns, how do you feel? Well, let me just tell you this. As a former teacher, remember I spent 15 years teaching high school at Danbury High School. Um, I acutely remember the post-Columbine period. And I was in the legislature at the time, too. So I was teaching and I was working in the state legislature. And... um, you know, I think knee-jerk, rash reactions are really bad for everybody. You know, a much more thoughtful approach to this issue is, is more important right now. So the minute somebody tries to politicize on either side, right, it's, it's not good. We have 17 people, many of them children, young adults, and well staff members of a very popular football coach that, were, that was murdered. And I think they deserve uh, time for reflection on their lives first. And then a larger, more global discussion about, all right, you know, what are we going to do about this? So um, I, I do get annoyed by that, and I get irritated by that. Um, but I just want to be clear that our schools have got to be a refuge for safety, security, and learning. And we all have to work on that together. We all own this. Did you have another question on this, Ethan? Because I was going to move on to something else. Uh, yeah, one last, uh, one last comment, actually. Uh, I understand that um, this school uh, was in Parkland, Florida, in Broward County. These kids, uh, I was telling Lou about this earlier, uh, had drilled. I mean, a lot of schools drill kids now about yes. what to do when something like this happens, and that very well could have prevented more deaths about the kids knowing what to do and, the, of course, the teachers knowing what to do. That is true. In fact, they drilled that morning. Um, so uh, in the afternoon when this uh, lunatic showed up, they were able to um, react in the way that they had just been taught. And, and look, we empty out Danbury High School probably four times a year, uh, working our evacuation uh, models. That's 3,000, over 3,000 kids that we're able to place in refuge areas. And every school uh, throughout our district uh, drills this tragically. You have to do it uh, probably once a quarter um, about what to do and, and how to follow the teacher's instructions. All right, there's no natural segue away from this topic, right. so let's just take That's a terrible. breath. Yeah. Everybody breathe. Okay. You were in a Super Bowl ad, and we haven't talked to you since. What the hell, man? <laughs> <laughs> I was. It did not, I want to be clear, it did not air in the New York market um, because obviously their cost of purchasing their commercials are like 22,000 times that of right. any other place in the United States of America. But it did uh, air out in the Midwest, on the West Coast, uh, uh, and, and down south, south southeastern U.S. So I just, uh, you know, the hospital asked me to do a, a commercial about uh, the service they provide, and I said I absolutely would do anything to help out the hospital and, and share what a great place it is. So happy to do it. Well, let me quote Alicia Keys when I say, this girl is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you are hot right now. Uh-huh. Look at you. Flames coming off your ass. Way you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I got uh, one weird one for you today. Yeah. I uh, read an article that... A lot of people probably breezed over this morning in the News Times about Price Right, and it got me all upset. So, you know, I've read between the lines, and it sounds like Price Right 
wants to like change their model to chase like the whole foods types. And I said, no, 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 no. You do you price right. You and you know what I like about price right. The prices are right. <laughs> you know, yeah, I go I go to price right too. By the way, uh, yeah, I, I, I yeah, yeah. Well, I go there more. How's that? Right. But yeah. I don't. And the, I, but I don't their like produce them. is very good. Yes, their very produce good is produce, very good. Yeah. yeah. So what are they doing? Are we talking about produce? They're going to slap a bunch of greener labels on everything because we all know that's socially conscious. Once you see a green sticker on something, that means the chickens. They roam free. They get massages. They go on Mediterranean <laughs> vacations. <laughs> Probably, right? I mean, uh, uh, and, and of course, you know, you always have to ask yourself, how is somebody getting apples in the middle of the winter? You know, obviously, the, these things have been shipped in from China or South America. Right. Or <laughs> right. So, um, and they've all been stuffed full of uh, all kinds of chemicals. But look, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with knowing what you're putting in your body. Um uh, I just hope, like you say, you know, they've always been good. They've always had great produce, and they've always the prices have always been really good. And Whole Foods has lowered their prices. I don't know if you've been in there lately, but they've dropped their prices pretty dramatically since Amazon purchased them. Now, after I uh, the last time I was at Whole Foods out in the parking lot smoking cigarettes, and I got looked at like I had just murdered someone. Mm-hmm. I don't go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't do that. You All just right. took your whole paycheck, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Danbury Mayor Mark Bouton, thank you for your time, as always. Uh, Thanks, guys. Talk to you next week. All All right. right. Bye-bye.